Welcome to this Tobacco University video where we're gonna look at general cannabis breeding overview. Just kind of looking at a general overview of something that can be quite complex. So hopefully this will provide a little description and allow you to develop some basic understanding. So first off, the basic review um, overview, I should say, of heredity. Other videos are provided on this channel to better understand the basic breeding process, because I said it can get quite confusing. We can look at Punnett squares and Mendelian genetics. We'll touch on that just a little bit here. Realize this is a very complex topic, and I just hope to give you that basic overview here on this video. So first off, we have to just understand the basics of, for example, genes, and there's dominant and there's recessive genes. So understanding uh, the difference between those two is important. Individuals receive one version of a gene called an allele from each parent. If the alleles are different, the dominant allele will be expressed while the uh, effect of the other allele called recessive is masked. So a dominant a gene will be expressed and can mask or override the effect of a different variant of the same gene on the other copy of the chromosome. Recessive genes, an individual must inherit two copies of the mutated allele in order to express that trait. Now keep in mind, this does not mean that genes are bad or negative recessive genes. Um, some some are, but not necessarily all of them. Sometimes recessive and dominant um, genes here have really no major effect, where we can see the example here of having a uh, attached earlobe versus kind of a distinctive earlobe here. This is an example of recessive trait and a dominant trait. Doesn't mean that the recessive can hear any worse than the dominant. This is an example of a phenotype or what it would physically look like compared to the genotype, the genetics here. And we can trace that through different lineages. Now you get into things called sometimes true breeding. And true breeding is a kind of breeding where the parents would produce offspring that would carry the same phenotype. Again, phenotype is how the organism looks. This means that the parents are homozygous for every trait. In this example, we're breeding purple with purple, getting purple, breeding purple with purple, getting purple, so on and so forth. They're true breeding. They come true from type. We see the same thing here with the uh, white flowers as well, where we're noticing that the self-pollination, we're getting more and more of the same. These would be examples of true breeding lines. Keep in mind there, uh, there's two sex chromosomes. We identify a, a female as having two X's and a male as having an X and a Y. This is how we get the female flowers, as we can see here, and then the male flowers we can see closer to me here. This is again, boy and girl, same example. Now the Y is drawn smaller, at least in humans, because the Y chromosome does contain less genes than the larger X. Now, a simplified Punnett square, and this may take you back to kind of uh, biology class, uh, where you're looking at crossing two um, genotypes together, and this Punnett square is just a quick way to organize things. And it's a great way to kind of quickly go through things. We see the big G would be dominant over the little g. We have a heterozygous, this is called, where we have a dominant and recessive allele with a dominant and recessive allele. We breed them together. 25% or one out of four would be the homozygous dominant. 50% would be heterozygotes. We have one dominant and one recessive allele. And then 25% would be homozygous recessive. Now, phenotypically, or how they would look, 75% of these would be green if the capital G represents green color, and 25% would be yellow because they need to have both inherit both of those genes there. Again, just a simplified quick run through of Punnett squares. We, you might hear things called like the F1 and the F2 generation uh, because some traits may skip a generation. So here we have the parental generation, the F1 and the F2. In this example, the parental generation, we have a tall plant and a short plant. You can see their genotype here. When these are bred together, all the resulting offspring are tall, but they're all heterozygous. I mean, they all contain that masked or that hidden recessive allele. However, when we breed these together, we see those short varieties come back again. They skipped that generation there. So it's important to keep that breeding lineage going through. And we can see that here again with the kind of cannabis strain, two cannabis strains breeding those together, uh, where we're tracking everything, use a female from these seeds, make a back cross, talk a second about back crossing, but keeping a lineage and a kind of a family tree is important for tracking traits. Now that back crossing that I briefly mentioned uh, previously, back crossing is crossing of a hybrid with one of its parents or an individually genetically similar to its parent. In order to achieve offspring with a generic identity which is closer to that of the parent, it's kind of like going backwards, literally within the cross. 
So here we have our parental strain, we have our F1 strain, well, we have that back cross going back through and reverting it to one of the parental there. Uh, and that's helping limit the kind of variability that you get. So here we have two parents. This is kind of a good way to kind of visually consider it. Parents A and parents um, R, breed them together, we get offspring B. We're gonna breed offspring B with that recurrent parent, parent R again. B with R, we get C. And then C, we breed that with R again. And we're kind of back crossing the sense we're going back to those genetics. We're constantly bringing those back into the line to try to create some genetic variability, but also kind of keep an idea of some of those traits recurring back in the population. Now, uh, Gregor Mendel was a monk that studied um, pea plants. These are kind of an example of kind of dihybrid crosses, they're called. So again, this is a simplified example. The phenotypes are provided in this simplified example. It's kind of a great visual that we can see. Tall plants and green plants uh, looking here. Many traits do not follow Mendelian inherence, so it's important to keep that in mind. So this helps show the variability that can occur from a basic cross involving only two traits. Now when I say they don't inherit uh, all Mendelian, so for example, here we either have green or we have kind of that purple color. Well, there's a chance we could get green with purple spots or purple with green spots. So there is a lot of complexities. And while you look at this and go, well, this is pretty complex, this is actually a simplified version of having either a trait being expressed or not expressed, following those Mendelian inheritance. They're either tall plants or they're short plants. They're either green or they're purple. Uh, so this is why keeping a track record of uh, your breeding projects, having a good idea going in and reviewing this video as well as other videos that are on this channel as well as others can be important to know what you're getting into so you have a good understanding of the breeding process so that you can be effective with the time that you spend and have an idea of what to look for, what to select against to create a hopeful, successful breeding project.